If you're a teenager and wanna be a millionaire, don't go to college, follow these steps instead. Hi, my name is Bill Allen, and I'm gonna teach you how to actually become a real estate mogul. In the last 15 years, I've made millions of dollars, and this is my tried and true method of how to be successful in real estate. If you can take these steps and master these principles young, it can set you up financially and professionally for the rest of your life. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content just like this, and share with a friend who's in their 30s just to rub it in their face, because you're gonna be a millionaire before you hit 20. The first step is to find a mentor. If you're a teenager watching this video, odds are you don't know what you're doing at all yet. No offense to all the Reddit geniuses out there who know everything about everything, but when I was 19, I basically had no idea what I was doing in real estate or anything for that matter, and I needed some guidance, just like you do. This is honestly good advice for anyone. Not just those of you who wanna become millionaires, but who wouldn't wanna be a millionaire? What I mean by finding a mentor is finding someone, preferably someone older with more experience than you, who's been in the game and can actually help you out. A mentor could be someone you already know, a family member, a friend, a parent, a relative, but you might need to look outside of your network and people that you know for a mentor. Real estate investment clubs and meetups are a great place to start. These types of meetups and real estate investor clubs and associations typically bring together other real estate investors, professionals, title companies, attorneys, realtors, people that are involved in real estate to network and collaborate on investment opportunities and learn from each other. In some areas, there might be a small fee to attend and some will be free. But if you find out where these meetings are and where they're happening in your local area, you can go to a few and actually put yourself out there. Getting to know the people in your area who are already doing it and learning as much as you can from them will be the key. But be careful. There are plenty of people who attend these meetings that are doing nothing. They go to the meetings just to hang out with their friends, sit in the corner and talk about how one day they're gonna do some deals. I don't wanna work. I just wanna bang on this mug all day. Did you ask me here for any specific reason? Uh, yes. You don't wanna talk to those people. You don't wanna hang out with those people. And those are not your mentors. You wanna look for the people who are in that room who are doing a lot of business and talking about how they're gonna continue growing. So find someone who's actually doing what you wanna do. If you can't find a mentor or you don't have a RIA meeting or a meetup near you for real estate, Go work for a company that's flipping or wholesaling houses. If you can intern with them, then you're getting free education and experience. If you can get a job with them, you can actually get paid to learn how to do what you wanna do. Trust me, it's a lot easier to learn from the experience and mistakes of other people, and real estate is a pretty high stakes game to play solo, so you don't wanna try to do it all yourself and go out on your own. Find a mentor that's willing to help you along the way, so that you can learn from their mistakes instead of yours. Once you get a mentor, the next thing you need to learn and master is sales and negotiation. Sales rules the world. Everything that we do is sales. I don't care what your job is, there is some element of sales involved in it. Here's where you youngins have the upper hand on old people like me. When you're a kid, you think you can do anything. That's why kids need parents. The older you get, the more you start to doubt yourself. So stop that voice in your head early by acknowledging this truth as young as you can. You are good at sales. And believe me, you've been selling since you were a little baby. My little kids sell me stuff all the time. How they want ice cream every night, they don't wanna to go to bed on time, they wanna stay up, they wanna party, they wanna watch a movie, they wanna watch an extra movie. And it doesn't have to feel like a slimy car salesman either. Jesus wants you to get in that car, sit in that car, follow me to the promised land. It's easy to fall into that mindset too, feeling like you're manipulating someone into buying something they don't need. It's simply not true. Selling is literally just telling people what they wanna hear about something they already know that they want. A good salesperson, which you are, so stop telling yourself you're not, knows that selling is actually serving. It's not convincing people to do something that they don't wanna do, but persuading them to do something they've already decided to do faster. People buy what they want. It's your job to figure out what that is. My company only started to become really successful when I removed the belief that I wasn't good at sales from my mind completely. And from then on, I was able to sell literally anything. The next step, and this is a big one, learn what a motivated seller is. You likely got a crappy gift for Christmas, or you had some clothes that you didn't want, or that really nice blazer you bought for that boring office job you thought you'd have in your 20s that you've worn into one interview and maybe to a wedding because your parents said it looked good on you and you hated it anyway. Yeah, it's time to get rid of these things. And what happens is you don't want to spend a bunch of time and effort to actually sell it for all that it's worth. So you throw it up on Facebook Marketplace, give it away to a friend, put it on eBay if you're old school like me, and you sold it for 20 bucks. 10 bucks or even free. That is what a motivated seller is. Someone who's willing to sell for less than it's worth to avoid the hassle, clear out the space in their house and get a little extra dough in their pocket. And that's what you should be looking for. Somebody who wants to sell their house quickly 
that doesn't want to deal with the realtor, doesn't want to put it up for sale. Maybe there's too much work that they have to do. And as a buyer, it's your job to look past the shag carpet, the scuffed up trim, the ugly wallpaper, cat hair, cat poop, cat pee, all cats for some reason in these houses, and see the value of the property for what it's actually worth and what it can be worth in the future. An ugly house that can be cleaned, renovated, and then sold at a higher price or rented out long term. In real estate, ugly is fixable. And I'll tell you what, cat pee smells like money to me. Probably not you yet, but it will. Your biggest concern is the smell. I'm sure that's highly manageable. Ugly houses usually sit on the market for a long time and their sellers become more and more motivated every single day that that for sale sign is up and their problem is not being solved. And nobody's stopping in, nobody's making the right offer, nobody's even interested in buying it. So if you find a seller that's motivated, likely their house is gonna be distressed and look like chunk, and you can get yourself a deal on that house that you could flip and make a profit. All right, step four is raising money. And it's pretty straightforward. When you're young, you don't really have any money. Oh, he's the Captain Obvious guy. And you don't have enough money or think you have enough money to buy a house, that's for sure. You need to find somebody with money who doesn't want to do the work. Most people think you need money to make money, and that is a broken mindset. That's what stops them from actually getting started. You just need to find somebody with money who doesn't know these first three steps that we talked about and is looking for a place to invest and to make a return on their money. Now, you shouldn't expect to just walk up to somebody, give them a quick elevator pitch and have an investor like that right away. This type of relationship requires trust and it's your job to build that trust with them. Trust is the cornerstone of any relationship in any business deal, but especially when it involves one person handing their money over to another. It's exactly why you don't give your roommate $20 to go to the Taco Bell drive-thru to get you some food and expect any change. I can tell when someone has zero respect for Baja Blast. So just with a little bit of time and building some trust, you can find an investor that doesn't do the work, that wants to make a return and believes in you and believes in the project that you can do a deal together. The last step is to manage your process. This is where the steps we just talked about go full circle. You go back to the beginning and you rinse and repeat and do this over and over and over again. But this next time, you take the lessons you've learned from your own experience, from your mentor's experience and feedback, and from everything that you've learned and do it better the next time. Think about the first time you play a new board game. Most of the instructions go over your head and the first half of the game is you just desperately trying to build a city only to be beaten by the guy with the longest road. Look at you, settlers of Catan. But the more you play, the more you understand that, hey, having sheep is like weirdly helpful and monopolies are cool and almost the entire game is dependent on where you start. And now, knowing that, I crush everybody at Settlers of Catan and real estate, so suck it. <laughs> But playing this game of real estate is a process just like everything else. Just take it one step at a time, make as much money as you can during each project, and move on to the next one with the lessons you've learned and then repeat it over and over again. You'll get better every time you play the game. The only time you actually lose is if you stop playing. These are the steps that you can take to become a millionaire real estate investor before you turn 20 years old, in your teens, and don't let anybody tell you you can't. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.